So you got your cup easel and it arrived in the mail. Now what? How do you set it up? Um, I just happened to order a new cup easel and it arrived in the mail, so I'm gonna set it up with you. Alright YouTube, what is up? It's been a while since I've last appeared on this channel. Um, but today I've got something special because I literally lugged basically my flats content um, to bring you this video, which is setting up my cup easel that came in the mail actually a couple weeks ago um, but I've kind of only set it up yesterday and then I thought why not I just redo all my setup and show it to you guys so um, let me just cover my address but this is the cup easel that arrived I ordered a second light cup easel because the one I had the super light cup easel uh, you may have noticed you may have caught that video right over there so go there and check it out um, but we are going to set up this cup easel together like what are you going to do how do you change the shelves all of that stuff um, how do you even use it how do you set it up so disclaimer i haven't taken this baby for a run um, i will in a couple of days so maybe if i have by the time i edited this video i'll show some footage here um, but if not you're gonna see it around my channel anyways because i am maybe committed to being back a little bit um, let's see let's see how it goes no promises uh, but yeah, there's chapter markers and everything, so y'all can go check it out. And um, I've got like an hour until sunset, maybe 40 minutes. So let's just get started. So right off the bat, your cup easel is going to come like this. It's got um, the shelf that you ordered, it's got the palette that you ordered, and it has got this mount right here at the back, which is the tripod mount. And this is what we're going to focus on in the beginning. So I'm like a little bit of a camera nerd as well, uh, just because I love video and I love photography. So what I always do is I always install a quick release mount first. And what that does is it allows for quick mounting and dismounting because when we're out there and we're setting up, we just want things to be as quick as possible. We don't want to be doing this, like putting it inside, making sure that everything is all like tight and everything and then we're just like screwing it in one by one or we also don't want to be worse off literally just taking this and then screwing this and then just doing this out in the field you know like screwing this little baby on like we don't want to be doing any of that not on in the field anyways so we want this just like on solid and if this is what you have um, because basically when you get a tripod you are going to basically have like this tripod kind of like plate and like the little baby plate right here where it can fit really nicely and snugly and then you can just go like tighten it on the side right here so this is the um i don't know if this is one of the recommended tripods but i did kind of like google lightweight tripods and this is the manfrotto element um tripod and this is one of the lighter and smaller form factor tripod so I like this because it fits in my backpack um, like it can literally fit inside my backpack here it's smaller than my backpack so when I bring in both I can literally fit both inside and how this works is right after you open it out like that um, this is the same tripod that I've had since my last cup easel video so you can probably see that as well um, you open it up like that and then you just kind of want to set your tripod up here so let's do that so this is one way of setting your tripod you have this little mount right here which goes right in the nook of this tripod and then you kind of just slide it in to fit and then you turn this knob and then once that's all tight you can literally flip your easel up but I like to do things a little bit quicker and this is not mandatory but this is just how I set up my tripod stuff. Um, I use this camera release system. It's called the F38 system and it's just a little little push and pull like that so I can just slide whatever I want inside and then it locks. And this is mainly, um, it works for cameras as well and that's why this I think was like so popular to begin with is because these are like they're tied to cameras so once i push this it goes off if i just slide it in 
right there, then it becomes um, like totally fixed. So that is my quick release. And therefore, this is what I like to put on my tripods. And therefore I have this, I have this quick release system on literally every single tripod that I have. So it makes it really easy if I'm bringing a different tripod. Like for example, the tripod that this camera is on, I'm just gonna have that on. So instead of this nubbin, I'm just gonna take this little thing off. And then I'm gonna attach this on. So as you can see, this does require like a screw. And I happen to have an orbit key. I mean, you can literally use any screw that you like, but I have an orbit key that has this tool and I just have it with me all the time. So I can literally just screw it in like that. And it's just really handy to have because as is with like things that require screwing, sometimes things can get loose. And it's just really handy for me to have it. Um, I've been out and about once and then my easel I think was a little bit loose, but because I had this thing with me, I was able to just tighten it in a moment's notice. I mean, you don't have to have it. It's just convenience really. And if you're used to carrying around tools with you, this will probably fit. So this is now on there and it will stay on there. Um, this nubbin, this is what I'm going to screw onto the release plate. I actually don't know what these are called. We're just using really scientific terms right here. Um, I'm going to try and align these two as much as possible, make it, you know, parallel. Let's kind of have it there. And then I will set this up on the tripod right here. So because it is perfectly aligned for the Manfrotto tripod, all I have to do is screw it in and voila. Now you can kind of see how this works in action is, so this, this little baby is what's going to release. I can just slide my tripod in and then it's done. Like my tripod is literally set up. And if I want to take it out, I just press this little baby and I slide it out. And isn't that great? Like, that's what you want when you're out in the field. You just want to be like in and out just like that. All right. Now I'm just going to show you the nicks and nicks of this easel. So might not see my face again um, until the end of the video. All right. So this is what we see when we open our cup easel for the very first time. Um, here I have opted for the left double shelf and what that looks like is I'll take this baby out I'll open this thing to the side and then I can put this thing on and there you go And that's basically like a basic cup easel setup um, Before I put on any of the accessories though, I want to show you guys how to change these shelves So my friend and I bought this cup easel like together in one shipment and then <laughs> We're trying to figure out if it's twisting to the right or twisting to the left. And I guess the saying is righty tighty, lefty loosey, but we didn't see any videos on YouTube. So I thought I would break this down. Um, but I got a bunch of different shelves and these are all factory seconds, which are really great, you guys. Like these look perfect. Like you could go for the main ones, I guess. Like when I got my super light, it was like the main easels, but these are just as fine, but okay. So what we need are alternative shelves and also two of these like L-shaped screws that come in this bag of, um, I think Kyle likes to package them separately. I have since combined my stuff, so I don't remember. And what we are going to do is we, let me take these shelves out for a little bit. So, and the easier way to do this actually is to close so that when we're twisting the stuff over here, it does not, you know, it does not get in the way. Cause when the thing is open, it's really hard to twist that way because we're like, like it's just kind of hitting it. So I like to close it and look at it from the top. And how this works is actually there's a screw on the top and 
on the bottom as well. So I recommend having two here. So one fit it right here and one fit it from the bottom right there. Can you guys see it? Here, just like, it's gonna zoom in a little bit. You kind of want to, right, you just kind of want to have this fit in right about there and also the bottom one. And because what happened was I kept twisting the top and I kept twisting and twisting and twisting but because it's connected to the bottom, it wasn't really unscrewing anything. So that's why we're going to do it two ways. So righty tighty, lefty loosey. So we want to go to the left. And this is like really confusing because like Kyle screws them on pretty dang tight. So um, it was nerve wracking when I first unscrewed it because I'm like, oh, what if I over tighten it? But turns out it's all good. Left loose. And I think we should be about, nope, not yet. These are some thick wooden pieces. And don't worry about the shelf. It's not going to fall off because magnets on this side. Science. Women in STEM. I did that joke once, women in STEM. And then I was literally in front of a woman that was actually in STEM. It was so embarrassing, guys. Don't ever do that. But here you go. So what you're left with is this. This top of the screw. And this is the bottom one and they go together like that and then your shelf is just kind of like wedged in the middle so let's change shelves and it's easier to do this when you're at home on a table so you don't actually lose these things but i am out here demoing this you guys so i will place them here oh there's also this thing sorry this little disc that belongs here I will also show you how we can set up like a double shelf in a second. And I think this is just to make sure that the stuff is tight and it doesn't really scratch against the wood. So it, it's a little bit of a, like something in between, like a disc in between. So if you want this thing, like I'm in the mood for a full, for a full, full palette, right? So. You know it's the right side because it looks exactly the same. So is it the right or the left? You can just try to align these with the magnets. And if it's on the left one, if it's on the wrong one, it's just not going to align because they're like the different poles of the magnet. So if it just clicks and it just snaps like, like that. And these are really strong magnets, guys. So yeah. And then what you do is you take this one again, you put it on the bottom, and then you put this one through the top and then you close this baby again because we don't want our hand getting in the way and then you just start screwing and what I do it's a little bit hard to hold the bottom so I just kind of like use my finger at the bottom to kind of gauge because it needs to go through a little bit and then now that it's slightly attached because otherwise if it's not attached yet it's just gonna fall straight off then I try to match it at the bottom, get my L to go in, and then, and then you just screw it to the right until it's super tight. And there you have it. A well set up Cubbies old palette. Ta -da! That's just set up really tight. Like this thing ain't going anywhere. And if I wanted to put it back to where it belongs, folded it up. These, geez, these magnets are so strong. Um, push it in. There you have it. Put the little thingy bag and close the thing and I'm ready to go. So yeah, these are the different like panels I got for, because I am very indecisive and I don't know you know, which palette or which kind of watercolor palette that I would like to use. Um, I did bring a bunch of them just to show. Let me show you how to switch out the mixing surface. So um, Cup Easel does sell a few mixing surfaces. The one that I 
like, and the one that I actually ordered that came with this is actually the gray palette. It's a great glass palette, and it's because I paint in gouache mainly, and painting in gouache, um, to see the gray palette is actually a lot nicer because it's opaque colors and therefore you can see the colors more clearly and you can see it as well in my previous like cup easel video but I also wanted something really light and therefore I kind of picked out this plastic palette so there's a little knob here where you can just lift the palette it's really easy to lift up it's a lot easier than my than my light palette where I have to like flip it over and catch the thing but yeah I just flip it up this kind of needs to be out of the way because the, the, the shelf needs to be out of the way because otherwise the wedge makes it a little bit harder to pick out or maybe not. But yeah, just lift it up like that and then I put this right in here and it fits right there. So this thing says factory second, I guess to indicate that this is the factory second. I don't know why. Um, I guess there are some blemishes here but these are gonna get covered with paint anyway, so I don't really mind. And then as for the glass one, there are some blemishes on the inside, so it's not perfect. And this is why I guess it's a factory second, but again, it's gonna get covered up in paint, so I don't really see the difference. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna chuck this plastic one in because I want, I want a really light version and I wanna see what this is like because I've already had the glass one and let's try out some different setups so i don't know at all why i would use this big one but let's see um this was just the one that i got out of indecisiveness um the one that the thing came with is by default i think it comes with this one so let's do a little switcheroo real quick All right, I'm not gonna tighten it too much because I'm gonna switch it out again anyways. So there's a bunch of different setups you can do with this, right? Like these have magnets and like really, really strong magnets. So I can literally put my most compact setup and you would notice because I literally just made a video about this in the previous video. It's this little baby, this art toolkit. It's magnetic, it's a metal palette. It sticks, it sticks so strongly. That thing is not going anywhere. But of course the art toolkit is not flat. So therefore there's a little bit of wiggle space here. And there, and it's not like I'm gonna use this with that anyway. Just wanted to demonstrate that that is actually magnetic. But I do have some other palettes with me that are magnetic or well, they're metal. And the magnets are actually on this palette. That's where the magic is. Got a couple. This is my green leaf and blueberry watercolor palette. I love this baby so much. I haven't used it in such a long time, but it's got, it's like quite well loved. I love this baby. Metal will not go anywhere. I can literally just like paint and it'll not move. Similarly, um, if you do not have this palette, well, not this specific one, but like if you have a more regular I think this is a more common shape this is my a yellow palette of watercolor it's the one where it folds into a it's got a trifold sort of situation you can put it on like this it's not it's not really gonna move um, you can put it on like this you can put it on like this and then of course there's like this little well right here right so you can always put a cup and it's supposed to be your water cup this is the one that comes with cup easel. Um, it's also well loved, as you can see. Fits right in there, very, very snug. And then brushes. This is the assortment of brushes that I bring out when I'm gouache painting. Um, these are Rosemary & Co., these are Etcher, these are Pro Art, whatever works for me. And these are too small. Um, I think these are meant for bigger brushes because these smaller ones, there's like so many holes down this line. So now I know that these do not fit. They are too big. But I think it's because these are like really detailed brushes, so they're really thin. And I can probably, all right, I can do that. 
Actually, this is magnetic, right? So I'm not scared of this tipping over. Ta-da! Nothing is changing. So there, that is one setup. And that's one of the reasons why I got this magnetic and cup shelf in case I wanted to use all my other watercolor stuff. But my real goal of getting these cup easel is actually for the double shelf. And that was like the true appeal to me is the double shelf um, setup that this easel allows. And for me, I think that combines the need for my airtight gouache with an easel setup. So we're gonna switch things around once more and this will be the last time because I'm gonna keep the double well set up. The double well magic comes from this set and this is like an airtight gouache palette. So if I detach this from the cup and I bring this palette, oop, not that one. Just take this palette out. This is my airtight gouache palette and there's like a bunch of different ways I can do it. So this folds out into a water cup and I can put it, I can literally slot that in there or I can switch them around, I guess, depending on what I want to do. So that fits there and this, maybe I'll face it out this way because I really just mainly paint with one brush and then I can lift it up and this is my palette and it fits right there because usually when I'm painting with this I don't know where to put this like silicone layer but now I can just put it right there and then ta-da I can paint so there's a couple of ways to attach the sketchbook and the actual cup easel set comes with a paper clip, but sometimes I also find that using these spring clamps are a little bit easier. So I'll just put, let me zoom out a little bit, put it there, fold this back onto itself. It's like, this is a watercolor board. I can clamp it like that. I usually have two. So usually what I do is I clamp it on this top right here and this becomes like a solid painting setup. So the reason why I chose like a left shelf is because I tend to put my arm down here. Like my arm tends to get in the way. My previous cup easel, like I kind of had it on the right and then I would just like always bonk it with my arm. So now I'm just doing it like that. So I have like, but of course it depends on you. Like my friend is um, right-handed and then she prefers to use a right shelf. If you want to double shelf it, it is possible. This is not the right shelf because as you can see, the magnet does not want to go there. But for demonstration's sake, we're going to do this. Um, let me just close up my palette for a moment because we don't need the mess of gouache getting in the way of our demonstration of setting up an easel. In order to set up your second shelf, you are going to need this top knob and this long screw and preferably this L thing as well, just to help out. So this goes on the top. What you want to do is kind of like stick this up from the bottom. So it goes up like that. You want to put your second shelf up like that. And then you want to get this. You just want to screw it on. It doesn't need to be super tight. Uh, I guess tight enough so that it doesn't move. It screws on pretty easily. Um, if you want to tighten it, I guess you can use that. But because this, it's not possible to carry around the easels with two shelves at the same time. So this one has to go off anyways. And then now you have it. You have like a two, a two shelf setup. This does not fit perfectly because I didn't buy the right version. So the magnets don't align, but that's, it's, it's a solid enough setup. And then if you want to tighten it, you can use this L thing. But I think for a quick setup, you probably don't need this. Um, and then to unscrew it, you just hold, make sure you catch the screw at the bottom. I like to use my finger just cause it's like, it gets in there a little bit stronger. And then you just take, you just screw this to the left, left loose. And now you have it. If I were you, I would just screw these two things together to carry it around. 
but because I don't use a double shelf, um, I'm just gonna, this is gonna go straight back in my storage. There's a few different sketchbook setups as well that I wanted to explore. So, um, this board is one, but then you can also fit, they recommend, I think, not bigger than a six by eight. So this is roughly a six by eight. Um, this is an A5 watercolor sketchbook. And whoop, you've seen that painting. I think you can just clamp it on like that. It can also fit, obviously, smaller watercolor sketchbooks, but like, I think my goal of getting an easel is to paint bigger. So I wouldn't really use these smaller. This is the A6 Etcher portrait watercolor sketchbook, which I filled with a bunch of stuff. I've also packed my essentials here in this like little art toolkit that I have. Um, so it's got a bunch of stuff like this is the rag that comes with a cup easel. So where it fits is it fits right here. There is a hole and I can just like, whoop. and I can just kind of clip. This is a carabiner that came with the thing. I'm going to clip it on the right side because it's easier for me. There and the cloth can just like hang on the side. So I'm experimenting using this instead of tissue paper. Um, this is the a rubber that came with the cup easel. So I can also clip on my sketchbooks there with that or the two paper clips that also came with my cup easel. This is a water mister and white gouache because white gouache you always need kind of like wet and doesn't really work with the palettes because the colors get muddy really quickly. And these are some rosemary brushes that I have cut. I've cut it with a handsaw. Thank you to Mrs. Barnabas on YouTube who recommended or who taught me how to do it via the comments. I cut it with a saw, I sanded it down, and then I painted it with like enamel. You can also do it with nail polish. But the unfortunate thing about this is like, it doesn't really work now here. Like it's too stubby. Well, actually no, it does. Um, yeah, because the like widths are also jagged. So it works in like really random things, really random slots. Um, huh. Yeah, so they don't really align perfectly, but they're there and they now fit. But yeah, so this is like my mini kit that I now will like bring along with me um, to my sketching like this little art toolkit because I find that it fits perfectly. And then this is tape, painter's tape. I just bought like the thinnest one that I own um, just because I want it to be the lightest, you know, like painting is all about being light. And that's why we have a light easel. And I think it just like wraps up. Oop, forgot this rubber band. It wraps up really nicely. And there goes the night lights. It wraps up really nicely into this thing. Now I'm all packed up and I can just close up my cup easel. Look at how quick it takes for me to disassemble, guys. And sorry, this nubbin belongs in there. And there I go. All right, I think that's it for me today, guys. Like we looked over a lot of stuff of the cup easel. Um, this baby is great. I can't wait to take this out um, for a run, especially because now this is a setup that like is compatible with my palette. So let me know what you guys think and if you guys are looking to get this easel. Um, if you've got any questions, drop them down below. Maybe I can answer them. Maybe somebody else can help answer them. And a little baby bonus, I'm on the Cup Easels website, which is crazy, right? Like Kyle, who runs cup easels was asking for photos a while ago and I just happened to have a bunch of really nice photos of my cup easels not with this one but with my other one with my super light so I'm just gonna put this here for posterity all right well I think we're gonna be doing more sketching videos so stay tuned um, I'm so hyped to be back again probably not regularly no promises but I'm just trying to kind of like I'm just in this phase where I feel like an abundance of creative energy and I want to channel it somewhere and I think YouTube is one of the greater places to do it. All right, 
Well, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Oh, that was so good. Just like a flat object. Woo. Oh my God. I can't believe we're back on YouTube, y'all. Like who would have thought? Like this was not in my 2024 bingo card. Like I thought when I left, I was just like, oh, not creating YouTube videos. It's like not stressful. But then I kind of miss it. Like, and that's a good reason to do something, right? Cause you kind of like it. All right, I'm, yeah, bring it out. See ya for real.